ओम तव कथा तप्त जीवन कविरीडित कलमशापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंत ये भूरीदा जना श्री श्री रामकृष्ण कथामृत द गॉस्पल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण रिकॉर्डेड बाय एम महेंद्रनाथ गुप्ता द अपोस्टल एंड डिसाइपल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण नवम परिच्छेद चतुर्थ दर्शन ताहार पर दिन छुट्टी छो बेला तीनटार समय मास्टर आशिया उपस्थित ठाकुर श्री रामकृष्ण से पूर्व परिचित घरे बसिया मेझेते मधुर पता से नरेंद्र भवनाथ और एक जन बसिया कईटी छोकरा उन्नीस कड़ी बचर बस ठाकुर सहस्य बदम छोट तख्तपे ऊपर बसिया और छोकर सहित आनंदे कथा बार्ता करते हैं look at the description here so the next day to the earlier third meeting tritiya darshan it is a holiday and m had gone there evening around afternoon around 3 o'clock thakur purva parish parichito ghare boshi achen purva parichito the well known what he has already seen in that room ramakrishna is sitting that room had two cots one is a bigger cot on which he used to sleep the other is a smaller one on which he used to sit and talk to the devotees the concept of chair table etc came much later people used to sit on the floor mostly or on a simple cot wooden cot and in the smaller cart he used to sit and talk to devotees and the devotees are sitting on the floor on a mat that is a common thing in those days they will have a fine mat on which people sit and who are the people present here narendra bhavanath are two ekjon boshiya achen narendra later swami vivekananda at that time i was hardly 18 19 years old i was a teenager st- studying in a college and bhavanath also was a uh, very close devotee later on he married and uh, uh, slightly moved away from the closer circle it appears we don't know exactly but sri ramakrishna is all praise for bhavanath He says Bhavanath and Naren form a pair, and Bhavanath and Naren belong to the class of ever free Nitya Siddhir Thak. So Bhavanath and Narendra are sitting on the floor, and a few teenagers boys are sitting. Unish Kodi Bachar boys, nineteen twenty years old. Thakur Shahashwadan. This you will see in the Kathamrita. मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम ठाकुर बोशी आचन सहसन इज नो पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इन विच रामकृष्ण वॉज विषण वदन ये सिटिंग देर विद वरीड डिप्रेस्ड लुक यू विल नॉट फाइंड एनी डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ रामकृष्ण इवन वेन यू आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम ए थेबल कैंस लेटर ऑन इन काशीपुर एटीन एटी सिक्स even then his face is full of joy you can see any picture of sri ramakrishna only three pictures are available you can see the face in which beaming with joy because sri ramakrishna used to live one very senior swami told us always he used to live in anandamaya kosha अन्नमय प्राणमय मनोमय विज्ञानमय आनंदमय द पंच कोषाध्य पंत आत्मा अन्नमय आत्मा द फिजिकल बॉडी प्राणमय आत्मा द वाइटल मनोमय आत्मा द मेंटल विज्ञानमय आत्मा द इंट्यूटिव इंटेलेक्चुअल इज नॉट द ऑर्डिनरी इंटेलेक्ट बट द इंट्यूटिव परसेप्शन एंड आनंदमय आत्मा 
that which transcends even the mind and reason, that is full of bliss, that is nearest to the Atman. So Sri Ramakrishna always remained in the state of Anandamaya. And if you think of this in terms of the Shat Chakra, which is much easier for us to perceive because we think this located in the body, although they are not exactly located, but still we can have a, a feeling for it. Muladhara, which is at the base of the spine, Swadishthana, which is at the place of the generative organ, Manipura, the navel. When the mind is moving in Muladhara, Swadishthana and Manipura, chakras, it is Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya. You can approximately map them on the Panchatma, Annamaya Atma corresponding to the Muladhara, Pranamaya Atma corresponding to Swadishthana, and Manomaya Atma corresponding to the navel of the Manipura. Then if you go beyond, you have the Vijnanamaya, which could correspond to the Anahata. So, Muladhara, Swadishthana, Manipura, Anahata, the four chakras, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya. Anandamaya corresponds to the Agnya chakra. Vishuddha is in between, a sub chakra. Vishuddha and Agnya together, the Agnya chakra corresponds to the Anandamaya. And that is a state of Saguna Brahman. Brahman with the attributes. Savishesha Brahman, Saguna Brahman, with qualities and attributes. That is the state of Anandamaya, Agnya Chakra, Saguna Brahman, Ishvara. And that corresponds to what Sri Ramakrishna used to call the Bhava Mukha. These are very deep philosophical and spiritual ideas. Sri Ramakrishna was commissioned, commanded by the Divine Mother, Tui Bhava Mukhe Thak, Tui Bhava Mukhe Thak, Tui Bhava Mukhe Thak. Three times he heard the voice of the Divine Mother, You remain in Bhava Mukha, You remain in Bhava Mukha, You remain in Bhava Mukha. The Bhava Mukha is the state of Ishvara, as explained by Swami Sharadananda Ji in his magnum opus, Sri Sri Ramakrishna Leela Prasanga, translated into English originally as Ramakrishna the Great Master, and later recently Ramakrishna's Divine Play. So the Bhava Mukha is a state of Sugana Brahman. Beyond that is the Nurguna Brahman, which is the Sahasrara. So this six chakras, shat chakras, Muladhara, Swadishthana, Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddha, Agya, can be mapped on to the five Atmas or Koshas, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. And being in a Bhava Mukha, constantly remaining in that state of Ishvara, Sri Ramakrishna is always full of divine joy. Sri Krishna, for example, you can never find Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Krishna at any time unhappy, depressed, worried. Kurukshetra war is just about to begin. All the Kongs have been blown, the war is starting. At that time, Arjuna became depressed. The Jiva, who is represented by Arjuna, goes through depression, sorrow, unhappiness. Sometimes he smiles, sometimes he weeps. As I said, life is a pendulum oscillating between a smile and a tear. That's life. But Ishvara is always in a state of bliss. Sri Krishna, the description of the Bhagavad Gita, Prahasan Niva Bharata. Senayor, Uphayor, Madhye, Vishidantam, Midam, Bacha. 
तम तथा कृपया विष्टम अश्रुपूर्णाकुलेक्षण विशीदंतमिद वाक्यम उवाच मधुसूदन सेकेंड चैप्टर बिगिनिंग Vishidantam, a person is depressed, sorrowful, Arjuna. Then, what is the delivery of Sri Krishna, of his message? Prahasan Niva, as if he is smiling. <laughs> Prahasan is a very interesting expressive. Maybe sarcastically, maybe uh, pleasantly. Where? Senayor, Bhayor, Madhye. Look at the description. Imagine, terrible war is just about to break out. Both the parties, the Kauravas and Pandavas, are arrayed in battle. The fiercest war is just about to begin. The general, the army general of the Pandavas party, Arjuna, collapses. Cries, Ashrupurna Kulikshanam. Arjuna weeping, crying. What is Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Krishna's reaction? Prahasan Niva is smiling pleasantly, happily. Between the two armies, betwixt these two terrible armies arrayed for war, Sri Krishna smiling, laughing, full of fun as it were. <laughs> That is the aspect of Avatara and Bhava Mukha. Sri Ramakrishna's Harshavadan is expression of his overflowing joy being stationed in Bhava Mukha, which is equivalent to Anandamaya Kosha, which is the same as Agnya Chakra. His mind never came down from the state. Often he used to go up and get merged in the Nirvikalpa Samadhi in the Sahasrara Chakra or beyond the Saguna and Savisesha into Nirguna and Nirvisesha Brahman. Again he will come back to this Agnya Chakra, Anandamaya and teach people. This is the idea of Bhava Mukha. So Sri Ramakrishna remaining in Bhava Mukha translates in actual perception as a Sahasya Vadana. Sahasya Vadana happily smiling. That's what we see. But the Sahasya, the smiling face of Sri Ramakrishna express, expressing overflowing joy and happiness, ananda, is a picture we see of his state of bhava mukha experienced by him within. In the moment's notice he goes to the supreme nirvikalpa samadhi merging in the state beyond Anandamaya, the Turiya state, or the Turiya Atita state and comes back to the Anandamaya Agnya Chakra. Sahasyavadana. This expression you will find in the Kathamrata so many times. Remember that Sahasyavadana of Sri Ramakrishna is not a kind of smile which we have. The ordinary the jiva also smiles. There may be some expression of the joy of the Atman, but here he is completely and totally merged in the Anandamaya aspect of the Supreme Atman and his Hasya expression of joy through smile and laughter is being positioned in the Bhava Mukha. Thakur Rahasvabadam Chota Takta Boshe Upar Boshiya Chen Ar Chokra De Shahid Anande Kathavatra Kurite Chen 
Sri Ramakrishna is full of smiles, Sahasya Vadam, and sitting in the small cot with great joy. He is having fun and frolic. <laughs> it's called in Bengali, Fashti Nashti. That means light-hearted, fun and frolic. Anande, Kathavarta, he is joking with these boys and children. See, in the case of the Avatara, the higher joy of God and the joy expressed through fun and frolic, they have no difference at all. Because always immersed in the highest joy, whatever they do, they talk, they express is an expression of their supreme joy of the Anandamaya, the Bhava Mukha. Master Ghare Pravesh Kuru Techen Dekhiyai Thakur Ucha Hashra Kuriya Chokra Der Boliya Uthilin Uire Abare Shache Boliya Hi Hashra Abare Shache Re Meaning Ah, here he is again coming. Everybody is laughing aloud, including Sri Ramakrishna himself. Because he had visited Sri Ramakrishna three times earlier, coming again, and Sri Ramakrishna is exceptionally happy because he knew that he will be the recorder of Sri Ramakrishna's say sayings in the form of this extraordinary universal scripture of the modern times. Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrita, the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. He knew it. And then, Oi, Ava Rishichere, there he comes again. Buliyai Hashop. Saying this, he is laughing. Shokale Hashi de Lagalo. Everybody started laughing. Master Ashia Bhumishtavya Pranam Kuriya Boshalin. Some master came, M, and then prostrated full length, called Shashtanga Pranam. Ashtanga means eight limbs. What are they? When you prostrate full length on the floor, your head touches the floor, that is one. <coughs> Both your arms touch the floor, three. And both your legs and feet touch the floor, Five, and manas, buddhi, and ahankara. Your mind, your intellect beyond the mind, and your egoism. All these eight parts, anga, surrendering to the divine person to whom you are prostrating is called Sashtanga Pranama. Sa Ashtanga Pranama. <coughs> Bhumishta Huya Pranam Kuriyala Kuritela Gilen. Kuriya Bushilin. He adds here very interestingly Age Hadjod Kuriya Dadaya Pranam Kuritem. Ingriji Poda Lokera Jamon Kore. Kintu Ajatini Bhumishto Ya Pranam Kurite Shikhiya Chen. Earlier he used to bow down like English educated people with folded hands standing. But a holy man, the saint, what to speak of an avatar like Sri Ramakrishna, one has to fall flat, surrendering oneself completely. Completely, the mind, the intellect, and egoism, mano buddhya hankara, surrendering oneself completely and totally. He had learned this after coming to Sri Ramakrishna three times, and therefore, this time, the fourth time, he falls flat and he is offering is Sashtanga Pranama, full length 
prostration before Sri Ramakrishna. And he sat down. Tini Asan Grahan Kurile, Sri Ramakrishna Kano Hashite Chilen, Tahai Narendra de Bhutta De Bujaya Dite Chen. After M. Mahindranath Gupta, called Master Mahasaya, sat down. Sri Ramakrishna is explaining to the teenage boys, Narendra and others, the cause of his laughter. <laughs> Why he is laughing? Oi, Abha Reshichare, again he is coming. The beautiful way of expression of Sri Ramakrishna, so sweet and so charming and so elevating and so full of pure fun. Dak, Akta Mayur ke Bela Charti Shumai Opin Kaye Di Chalo. Dak, Poor Din, Thil Charti Shumai Mayur Ta Upasthit. Opin Er Mooma Te Dvare Chalo, Thik Shumai Opin Khete Yeshe Chhe. Shokalur Hasho. <laughs> Somebody fed a pe peacock with a small dose of opium at 4 o'clock in the evening. Next day, exactly at 4 o'clock, the peacock came intoxicated by the smell of opium and remembering the time at which he was given opium the previous day. Everybody laughs aloud again. That means the spiritual instruction, the talks, the presence, samadhi, the company of this divine personage, Sri Sri Ramakrishna, was so divinely intoxicating that once you get caught in this intoxication atmosphere, it's extremely difficult for you to move away from there. All of us, all of you, have been caught by this divine intoxication. Sri Ramakrishna always used to compare the intoxication of divine music and divine bhajan, meditation, presence of God to the ordinary intoxication that one gets through alcohol or liquor because it's easier for people to understand. The ordinary people get intoxicated through alcohol but there's a divine kind of intoxication which is a supremely elevating intoxication. So he used to always compare these two in order that people can understand this divine intoxication. That's why in Tantra, the Surapana, drinking of wine, is practiced, not the physical wine, but the divine intoxication. The Madhu, the intoxication of the madhu, the honey, the nectar is not f from the senses. We usually get intoxicated with the senses. With the lower nature, shabda, sparsha, arupa, rasa, gandha. Shabda, music. Music intoxicates us particularly music which is of a variety in which all the senses are roused. In which your lower nature is kindled. Sparsha, touch, which everybody knows so well. Rupa, the beautiful farm. You see a farm immediately got intoxicated, run behind that farm, sensually attracted. Rasa, taste, 
Gandha smell. Fragrance is so intoxicating. It's a billion, billion dollar industry, this scent industry, the fragrance industry. <laughs> How much of time and energy and money the human civilization is spending, has spent and will be spending for intoxication of the senses through Shabda Sparsha Rupa Rasagandha, sound, touch, form, sight, taste, and smell, fragrance. Now there is another kind of intoxication, which is a divine intoxication of uh, God's company, divine music, bhajan. meditation, japa, everything connected with God as a center. So, the great sadhakas, aspirants, illumine the people, have taught the ordinary humanity, beings like us, the jivas like us, why do you waste time, O oh mind? in all this sensual intoxication. These sadhakas always address the mind. It is the mind which matters. Manayeva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yoho Bondage and liberation, bandha and moksha, both of them are in the mind only. It is the mind which actually makes you feel bound, is the mind which makes you feel liberated. So address the mind, educate the mind. And the mind cannot and should not be violently treated. It will revolt. For hundreds of thousands of years, the mind has been trained to be immersed in sensuality and sensual pleasures, intoxication of the senses. Suddenly and violently, if you turn it around, it will revolt. So educate it, tell it about the dangers of sensual experience. Oh mind, please think of God. Mirabai, sadhana karna chahiye manuva, bhajan karna chahiye. Oh mind, do sadhana, do bhajana. Think of God, meditate on God, sing His glory. He is telling the mind. Ra Kamala Kanta, very beautiful song. Sri Ramakrishna is very fond of this song. Very often he used to sing this. Oh mind, drink of the divine nectar from Kali's feet, from Shyama's feet. The beautiful lotus of Kali's feet contains divine nectar. Sip the divine nectar. Why are you getting drowned and killed by the honey in the various sense objects? Vishaya Madhu. Vishaya is sense object, Madhu is honey. Oh mind, comparing the mind with a Brahmara or a bee, oh bee of my mind. Why are you wasting time and getting destroyed, as it were, by sipping the honey in the senses? Come on, give it up and come and sip the divine nectar of the lotus of Kali's feet and Shyama's feet. Majlo Amar Manu Pramara Shyama Pada Neel Kamale Shama Pada Neel Kamale Kali Pada Neel Kamale Majlo Amar Manu Pramara Vishaya Madhu Tuchha Halo Kamadi Kushum Shakale Majlo Amar Manu Pramara 
ಶ್ಯಾಮಾಪದ ನೀಲ್ ಕಮಲೆ ಕಾಲಿಪದ ನೀಲ್ ಕಮಲೆ ದಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಬ್ಲೂ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮಾಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಲೀಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಂಟೇನ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ನೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಓ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕೋಲ್ ಸಿಪ್ ದಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಇಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ವಿಷಯ ಮಧು ತುಚ್ಛ ಹೋಲೋ the sensual honey which you are now sipping in the various sense objects it's just a tinsel trash compared to the divine nectar which you are now tasting kamadi kushum sokale the various flowers kama etc lust and various enjoyments that you have of the senses that is just trash compared to the divine nectar that you are sipping at the feet of mother kali <coughs> these are some of the divine sentiments so the opium which the peacock was fed with is compared to the divine intoxication that you get in the company of a divine incarnation avatar holy personage the whole atmosphere is charged with such a spiritual vibration that your mind is elevated you feel some divine joy even now if you go to the room where sri ramakrishna stayed for decades upon end or you come to belur math the temple when you enter or you go to kamar pagor or jairambati and go to the room where sri ramakrishna lived in kamar pukur or the old house of mother where mother lived for several decades or the new house where she stayed for a few years you can see the charged the spiritual atmosphere or go to kualpara which was called the baitak khana the parlor where mother used to halt when she used to travel to calcutta via vishnupur she used to halt there and still father is jagadamba ashram a small little hut where mother stayed such a charged atmosphere you can feel your mind is immediately elevated you feel some divine joy and intoxication it pulls you if you are sensitive and if you are struggling with your senses that's why tirtha pilgrimage is prescribed because you have a taste of divine intoxication and remembrance of this taste itself will elevate you come back think of the taste which you enjoyed even ordinary sensual intoxication people can't have it physically every time they have the memory they put it in the video they put it in pictures they put it in music and constantly go back and relive that experience in memory which is just a pale used the imitation of that grand spiritual divine intoxication of the presence of god <coughs> so he is making a comparison given and fun he says that peacock which was fed with opium on a particular day at 4 o'clock comes back again at the same time oi je avare she chere ai ah he comes again everybody laughs thik shome opium khete আবার ময়ুরের ছে সকলের হাস্য দিস উইল ফাইন্ড ইন দ্য গসপেল সো অফন উইথ ইন প্যারেন্সেস ইন ব্র্যাকেটস সকলের হাস্য হাস্য লাফটার অল লাফ এভরি পেজ অফ দ্য কথামৃতা উইল হ্যাভ দিস অলমোস্ট সো মাচ অফ জয় এভরিওয়্যার देयर ইজ এন ইন্টারেস্টিং ইনসিডেন্ট ইন স্বামী তুরিয়ানন্দাস লাইফ অ্যাজ ইউ নো Swami Turiyananda was a, a monastic sannyasin disciple of Sri Ramakrishna 
great yogi, very serious. You can see how he is. Those of you, you have seen his pictures, sitting straight like this. The yogis usually don't laugh much. <laughs> Gyanis are full of joy, because the divine joy of the Atman experience always makes them laugh. You can see Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi, great saint of Arunachala in the, in the southern part of India, that divine smile in his lips. And bhaktas are always full of joy all the time. And Sri Ramakrishna is a bhakta and a jnani and one, and also a yogi. <laughs> but if a pure yogi, seriously meditative, not laughing with anybody, not talking to people unnecessarily, not eating this, not eating that, avoiding all kinds of food, very selective in your movements, in your eating, They're so serious. <laughs> but in the Kasamrita you will see at every point, <laughs> laughter and laughter and laughter and jokes. So Swami Turiyananda once chided a Brahmachari. I think it was Swami Ganeshwarananda, later on he became Ganeshwarananda. He was the founder of the Chicago Center of the Ramakrishna, of the Vedanta Society in America. But he was so full of fun. He used to cut jokes and he used to be so full of fun. And everybody used to laugh. One Turiyananda noticed this and called him. Hey, you have become a Brahmachari, you should be more serious. Why are you laughing around and then joking and then making fun and making everybody laugh? What have you achieved in life, in spiritual life that you can laugh around? Be more serious. Don't be frivolous. What he meant was different. What he meant was don't be frivolous. Don't spend your energy in frivolous fun and frolic. That's what he meant. But he told it very seriously. This Brahmachari is also super intelligent. He quietly listened without any protest. With a folded hand said, Maharaj, can I make a statement? What is that? Seriously. If you read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrita, you get just the opposite picture. Sri Ravakrishna all the time full of fun and joking and laughing. Suddenly he goes into Samadhi, suddenly he dances and sings. And everybody is this mart of joy, Anandir heart Janan Vurshayachi. This is the statement made here, Anandir heart. Heart means the marketplace. It's actually the marketplace is full of joy. Ananda Shagar Uthali Majlo Amar Manu Pramora Sukha Dukha Samana Holo Sukha Sukha and Dukha Joy and sorrow become one, same. And the ocean of Ananda is constantly rising. Ananda Shagar Uthali <coughs> There is a high tide of the ocean of joy. See, if you read the Kasamrita, you have a totally different picture. Immediately, Swami Turiyananda's entire face changed. With the tears in his eyes, he said, Yes, my dear boy, what you say is right. Oh, we have seen Sri Ramakrishna all the time full of joy. There was not a single dull, sorrowful moment in his company. Holy Mother Sarada Devi once said, We have never seen him at any time morose or un unhappy. Same with like Sri Krishna. From childhood, the baby Gopala, up to the time when he became the Mathura Adhisha, even in the Kurukshetra war, he is so full of joy. Prasanniva Bharata. Ananda Shagar Uthale. Continuously the joy is welling up from within. Uthle che prem parabar, uthle che prem parabar. 
তোরা আয় রে ছোটে ভাবের মুটে সং উইথ দেবেন মজুমদার এ ডিসাইপল অফ শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ হাউস হোল্ড ডিসাইপল উছলে যে প্রেম পারাবার দ্য লাভ ডিভাইন লাভ অফ গড দ্য জয় ইজ কনস্ট্যান্টলি রাইজিং লাইক এ ওয়েভ কাম অন কাম অন অল অফ ইউ হু আর সাফারিং অ্যান্ড স্ট্রাগলিং ইন দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড ক্যারিং দিস থার্বল বার্ড অফ সংসারা অল অফ ইউ কাম কাম কুইকলি here is a great joy mart of joy <laughs> just like christ said there will be time enough to weep later and cry now when you are with the bridegroom rejoice and be exceeding glad same thing all the avatars speak the same language bridegroom meaning the avatar when you are there with the avatar the bride feels so much of joy with the bridegroom the husband the young husband had come and the young wife is so full of joy he is exa- giving these examples worldly examples are given by these avataras so that we can understand well called bridal mysticism mystically you connect yourself with lord like a, 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 a you a, a bride connects to the bridegroom a wife connects to the husband the pure love no carnality at all in this so he says be exceeding glad rejoice there will be time enough to weep later on when bridegroom goes away now you are in the presence of the divine spirit come on laugh and sing and be full of joy and he also says tora aaye re chote bhave re muthe all of you are carrying a terrible burden of the samsara come partake of this joy come unto me ye that are weary and heavy laden and i shall give ye rest christ words sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam braja aham tva sarva papebhyo mukshayishyami mashucha sri krishna in the bhagavad gita giving up all dharma 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 everything give up all this and come to me and surrender to me and i shall release you from all sins and then give you divine love divine exceptional overflowing never ending joy <coughs> this idea is there all the time in the spiritual literature of india বোহে নিরন্তর অনন্ত আনন্দ ধারা রবীন্দ্রনাথ বিউটিফুল সং বি স্বামী বিবেকানন্দ নরেন্দ্র ইউজ টু সিং ওয়েন ইউ ওয়াজ এ পার্ট অফ রাম সমাজ বোহে নিরন্তর নিরন্তর মিন আনস্টপিংলি উইদাউট এনি ব্রেক আনব্রোকেন স্ট্রিম অফ ব্লিস অনন্ত আনন্দ ধারা আনন্দিং অনন্ত anand hara the stream of bliss is constantly flowing <coughs> you can have all the spiritual experience in between but the bliss is constantly flowing you hear the anahata dhvani rising in the chidakasha without beginning and then the omkara the music of the spheres as called by the greek philosophers and you see the divine light in your heart the uncreated light as is spoken of by the christian mystics all these experiences you will have and the ananta ananda hara will be flowing baje asi manabha majhe nadirav baje asi manabha asima without boundaries infinite nabha chidakasha <coughs> anadi rava without beginning and therefore without end constantly rising jage anantaravi chandratara 
अनंत रविचंद्र तारा इन्फिनिट countless suns and moons and stars that is blinding infinite divine light jage it rises in your heart these are yogic experiences but in and through all this you have the flow of the divine pure infinite joy stream of joy bohe nirantara आनंद आनंद धारा एवरी वेयर इन स्पिरिचुअल लिटरेचर इन इंडिया वेदर इट इज अ सॉन्ग वेदर इट इज अ पोएट्री ऑलवेज द आइडिया ऑफ आनंद एवरी वेयर इज ओनली आनंद इन फैक्ट द वर्ड दुख अकर्स नो वेयर इन द उपनिषद्स ओनली इन द श्वेताश्वत टुवर्ड्स द एंड दुख अंत इज मेंशनड एंड ऑफ दुख it's very strange the concept of dukkha was there nowhere in the upanishads in the vedanta <laughs> perhaps the idea of dukkha was introduced <clears throat> in indian spiritual lore by bhagavan buddha who said dukham dukham sarvam dukham <laughs> sorrow sorrow everything is sorrow janma is dukha jara is dukha old age is dukha death is dukha everything is dukha sarvam dukha mayam many people have got called it pessimistic some people say no it is realistic but upanishads talk about ananda ananda adhye vakhal vimani bhuta nijayante आनंदे न जाता नि जीवंती आनंद प्रयंत वॉट इज ब्रह्म दैट फ्रॉम विच ऑल द बीइंग्स राइस दैट इन विच ऑल द बीइंग्स रिसाइड एंड दैट इन टू विच ऑल द बीइंग्स आर अल्टीमेटली अब्सॉर्ब दैट इज ब्रह्म वॉट इज दैट दैट इज आनंद आनंदेन खल विमानी भूतानी जायंते ऑल द बीइंग्स अराइज फ्रॉम दिस आनंद स्वरूप इन्फिनिट ब्रह्म विज्ञान आनंदम ब्रह्म डेफिनेशन ऑफ ब्रह्म ब्रह्म इज विज्ञान प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड आनंद प्योर ब्लिस दैट्स व्हाई द अप्रोक्सिमेट डेफिनेशन ऑफ ब्रह्म इफ एट ऑल यू कैन डिफाइन इट सत चित आनंद स्वरूप इट इज एग्जिस्टेंस एब्सोल्यूट इट इज consciousness absolute awareness absolute and bliss joy absolute that is brahman everything is only ananda so this idea of sakala or hasya which you find in the kathamrita is not ordinary laughter people's minds are so full of joy so elevated so pure so charged with the spirituality <coughs> the ananda swarup aspect of brahman that people are laughing pouring out expressing their joy within in fact sri ramakrishna avatar is the embodiment manifestation the ananda aspect of brahman bhakti expresses the ananda aspect gyana expresses the chitta the consciousness aspect gyanis have so much of joy within but that has an float and ecstasy ecstatic dancing and singing and laughing <coughs> sri ramakrishna is very fond of songs relating to mad people and people intoxicated moving around <laughs> there is an interesting incident he was coming from calcutta to dakshineshwar back in a horse carriage on the way he saw a few people gathered in a liquor shop drinking and being drunk they are making fun laughing and jumping about and dancing 
Sri Ramakrishna was divinely inspired by love of God and was almost stepping out from the carriage. He was pulled back as though he had fallen down. Ba, 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 pesto, ananda karo, ananda karo. That sight completely overwhelmed him into the consciousness of God's divine love and joy. Every little thing in the world, what we call sensory, sensual, worldly experience for Sri Ramakrishna, immediately connects it to the divine. This is one practice which we can adopt. It's not very difficult. Every little thing, every word, every sentence, every talk, every experience, try to connect it to the divine, try to connect it to God. Sri Ramakrishna is saying, seeing one European, one boy, British or European boy, Shaheb, leaning against the tree, immediately went into Samadhi, seeing in that boy the Tribhanga, Krishna who is bent in three places, is called Tribhanga, immediately went into ecstasy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was told about when he was moving in a, in a village, is that a mati te khol hai. From this soil, the drum which is beaten during kirtan, it is being prepared, manufactured. Immediately went into samadhi thinking of Krishna. That khol, the drum, immediately reminded him of kirtan. Kirtan, song, he reminded him of Sri Krishna's divine love and ecstasy, went into Samadhi. Seeing the ocean, the blue ocean, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was immediately transported into divine ecstasy, thinking of Sri Krishna. See, every experience in this world, even of the senses, is actually the experience of the divine. This is a very, very high state, but we can even mentally, intellectually try to simulate this state of experience and connect it to God. Make this habit. Somebody is talking to you, you are in a conversation, you are in a conference, people are thinking, just look at those faces, look at what they say, and connected to the divine supreme source which makes them speak, makes them laugh, make them think. Because that is the divine power of God, the Brahma Shakti, which is making them think and talk and quarrel and discuss. What is that power which makes you think? What is that Shakti, what is that energy which makes your eyes see, your ears hear? This question is asked in the Kena Upanishad. Kena Eshitam Patati Preshitam Manaha Kena Pranav Prathama Preeti Yuktaha Kena Eshitam Vachami Maam Vadanti Chakshu Srotram Kau Devo Yunakti What is that power which makes you, the mind to think and the ears hear, the eyes see? Is it by the eye that you see or is there some power behind it? Is it by the ear that you hear or by some energy of God which is behind it? Is it the mind which sings or some power which is behind the mind? The answer is given so graphically, so poetically. How do you explain this? No, it is not the ear that hears. It is not the eye which sees. The eye of the eye, the ear of the ear, the mind of the mind. Shrotrasya shrotram manaso mano yad vacho havacham savu pranasya pranaha chakshushas chakshurati machadhira pretyasman bhoka damrita bhavanti Look at the expression. They discovered that energy of Brahman behind it. What is that? Uma haimavati sa brahmeti ho vacha The Shakti of Brahman came and told these various devatas who have become proud and arrogant that is the power of Brahman by which you can function like this. So you can connect if you try. Keep the mind at an elevated state of consciousness. 
by which you will be able to connect everything to the divine source which will elevate you. In fact, this is a practice which is mentioned in the Kathopanishad. Ena rupam rasam gandham shabdas parashascha mahithunan ete neva vijanati kimatra parasishyate etadvaitat That Atman or Brahman by whose power you can have the sensation of Shabdas Parsha Rupa Rasagandha. You can hear the sounds, you can see the forms, you can taste all that you want to taste. You can have a sense of touch, enjoyment, and you can smell. And even the sensual pleasure that you have happens in and through the Atman. Ena. That is the Atman. So every sense experience in a sense gives you the experience of God, experience of Brahman, experience of the Atman. This is a very, very positive way of approaching spirituality which Ramakrishna has emphasized completely in this present age. Don't negatively run away from these experiences. Remember, all these experiences become possible in and through God. It is because He exists, you are able to experience all this. So find out that. Source of that experience. Rejoice. So He says here, Aapim khete abhar thik shumaye sheche. Once you have a taste of this divine experience, you will not be able to move away from it. That will pull you all the time. You can't escape it. So again and again, the Upanishads in the Gita, in the, in the various scriptures, not only in Hinduism, all the world religions, the idea of Ananda, the presence of God is mentioned. God is Ananda Swarupa, particularly when He comes as a divine manifestation in a human form, He distributes divine joy everywhere, wherever He goes. That is why the avatara Leela Chintana is prescribed. You think of the divine play of the avatars. Think of the divine play of Sri Krishna through the Bhagavatam through the Mahabharata. Divine play of Ramachandra through the Ramayana, divine play of Sri Chaitanya through the Chaitanya Leela and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, divine Leela of Sri Ramakrishna through Sri Sri Ramakrishna Leela Prasanga and the Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrita, divine Leela of Jesus through the Bible and so on. You think of the divine plays of these great saints and sages and incarnations of God. You be immersed in their Leela Chintana, contemplation and the divine play of these in the mortal coil in human form like you and I, so that we can connect to them. It is not easy to connect to Durga and Kali and Ganesha and various deities. You can connect easily to the human form in which these divine beings come, avataras, for our sake, coming down, avatarana, I mean coming down, so that we can be elevated to go up. Unless God comes as man, man can never be elevated to the level of God. So this is the significance of the Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrita, so many hundreds of thousands of incidents about his Leela are mentioned. Contemplate any one of them. Today we had this beautiful picture, pen picture, the video picture as it were, given to us by M, by the divine command of Sri Ramakrishna. He imagines Ramakrishna sitting there in the small cot, Narendra, Bhavanath and many teenagers are present and Sri Ramakrishna is full of joy, Sahasravadan and full of fun and frolic with his voice. Then 
M enters and Sri Ramakrishna says, AJ, Avarisha Chere, Aya, he comes again and everybody is laughing and he tells this, tells this joke about a peacock being fed with opium and the peacock exactly at the next day, same hour comes back. This is the incident we studied today. Think of this, contemplate this, meditate upon this and enjoy the company of Sri Ramakrishna. Be divinely intoxicated. This is the purpose of human life. So much time has gone wasted in sensual enjoyment. Let's wake up, wake up and enjoy the divinity in the presence and company of the avatara through a study and contemplation of this holy book, the modern scripture, universal scripture, the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrita. Om Niranjanam Nityamanantarupam Bhaktanukam Padhuta Vigraham Vai Ishavataram Parameshamidyam Midyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasanamamaha Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur